hello everyone in this lesson i will show you how to assign the design eccentricity for earthquake loading in strap software so let's get started here you can see i have created one model where the dimension of the structure is different for different stories so in that case how you can assign the eccentricity or the design eccentricity in the structure so let's see this so if I go to uh, geometry here you can see these are the dimensions of my structure along x1 direction it is 30 meter along x2 direction it is 25 meter up to the first floor which is our podium level after that it is of uh, 15 meter by 20 meter structure so for different floor levels we need to provide the eccentricities now first let us understand what design eccentricity is I will go to IS 1893-2016 code and here you can see at 7.2-8.2 clause it is uh, telling us about the design eccentricity. So design eccentricity is nothing but the static eccentricity ESI plus or minus 5% of the dimension of the building. Now this dimension should be perpendicular to the earthquake direction. You can see here it is clearly written that bi equal to floor plan dimension of floor i perpendicular to the direction of force and esi is nothing but the static eccentricity now what is this static eccentricity this is nothing but the distance between the center of mass and the center of resistance of the structure now this esi or the static eccentricity will be taken care by the software itself but this five percent of the floor dimension that we need to provide in order to consider this design eccentricity okay so now how to get this design eccentricity we will go to the strap software now we need to make some calculation by ourselves you can see these dimensions we have so i'll go to the whiteboard and i will write it here so up to the floor level two that means our podium level if you see the dimension of the building suppose i will be considering first x1 direction so the bi for x1 the bi will be the dimension of x2 okay which is equal to if you see in strap the dimension of x2 is 25 meter so it is 25 meter right so in that case 0 0.05 bi will be 0 0.05 multiplied by 25 meter which will be 1.25 meter so this is for x direction force x1 direction force okay now we will find similarly for x2 direction force which will be 0 0.05 bi now here in that case bi will be the dimension of x1 which is 30 meter if you see here the dimension of x1 direction it is 30 meter so it will be 0 0.05 multiplied by 30 meter equal to it will be 1.5 meters so this is up to the floor 2 after that after floor 2 all the dimensions are same so for x1 direction force we need to get the dimension of x2 so the x2 dimension is 15 meter right so again i will write here above floor 2 level okay it will be if we are considering x1 di direction then 0 0.05 bi will be 0 0.05 multiplied by 15 meter this 15 meter is nothing but the dimension of x2 okay so it will be 0 0.75 meter correct similarly we will find for the x2 direction force now we need to consider the dimension of x1 which is 20 meters so 0 0.05 bi equal to 0 0.05 multiplied by 20 meter okay this 20 meter is nothing but the dimension of x1 it will be 1 meter so up to f2 floor that means our podium level we will be assigning the eccentricity plus minus 1.25 and plus minus 1.5 for these two directions and after f2 level after the podium level it will be for x1 direction force 
the eccentricity will be plus minus 0 0.75 and plus minus 1 meter and where we are going to provide this it will be in the dx2 right see let me just uh, explain you here if this is my structure and force is coming from this side so this is my center of mass okay and this is my center of rigidity suppose so we need to assign this eccentricity along this direction along this direction and for this direction force it will be along this direction so that means for x1 direction force the eccentricity will be will be assigned along x2 direction so we can write it as dx2 for x2 direction force the eccentricity will be assigned and in dx1 direction means along x1 direction similarly i will write it here also dx2 dx1 now why dx2 and x1 because our plan directions are x1 and x2 only if your plan direction is x1 and x3 then it will be uh, x1 and x3 dx1 and dx3 accounting like okay so let us assign these values in strap software so i will go to the strap and if i go to weights you can see i have already assigned the static loads if you want to know more about this how to assign static loads then you can watch our previous videos regarding the seismic analysis of uh, structure uh, in in strap okay i will give the link also here now here let us go to mode shapes suppose i want to consider initially here let us see how many number of stories we have we have one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so uh, though it is not required but still we will consider three degree of freedoms and 10 levels so it will be 30 maybe 30 number of modes are not required to get 90 percent of mass participation but still uh, the the basic formula that we have three degrees of freedom and with the flow level so i have considered 30 now the the weight of the structure will be assigned along uh, we will assign along all three directions now if your structure is having uh, similar dimension throughout the floor all the floors okay in that case you do not have to assign the eccentricity floor wise you can directly assign here as the default eccentricity okay for x1 direction force it will be in the x dx2 for x2 direction force it will be in dx1 but as we have different uh, uh, different floor dimensions in different floors for that i will go to eccentricities here and here we can assign this eccentricity okay now my earthquake, di earthquake direction is x1 and if you see here after float to level we will assign one value and after that we will assign a different value okay here you can uh, note these values so now i will go to uh, here and uh, obviously as the earthquake direction is x1 we will be assigning the eccentricity along x2 which is dx2 so it will be for uh, up to flow level 2 so here and these two levels it will be 1.25 i am considering the positive values first 1.25 and after that the value will be 1 meter so i will consider sorry 0 0.75 meter it will be for x1 direction so all these values we will be considering 0 0.75 okay so we have assigned these values now i will click on okay i will click on okay again you can see height direction is always x3 for us and i have considered 30 number of modes i'll click on okay it will take some time to solve the model i will click on solve and solve here you can see it is solving all the 30 number of modes okay so we have solved all the 30 number of modes now i will go to uh, parameters and here the seismic uh, load i will be considering all the 30 modes the code i will be considering is 1893016 the direction of force will be x1 soil type i will consider medium importance factor i will be considering 1.2 reduction factor i will be considering 5 as per is 1893 and seismic zone factor i will be considering 0.36 now the total weight of the structure will be calculated by the software itself 
and this time period value you need to consider as per the formula given in IS1893 which is 0.09 h over root d. So I have considered for x1 direction I have already calculated it is 0.63 seconds. Now I'll click on OK and I'll click on update results. Okay, I think I have not uh, solved the load, so just let me solve it here. Okay, I will come to dynamics and update. So here we have you can see the direction one and I will click on OK. I'll consider all the 30 modes actually. And I'll click on OK. Okay, I have done. Now what I will do, I will go back to weights again. Again, mode shapes, eccentricities, and I'll make all these values negative because it will be plus minus 0 0.05 bi, right? So, minus values I'll be considering here now. Okay, so I have done now. Click on OK ok again and solve it again now i will go to parameters again it will be again x1 i will be considering all 30 modes the same everything will be same click on ok and click on update results now it will be updating with negative value ok the modes will be considered all the 30 modes and click on ok Fine. Now the similar thing we will do for the other direction. So I'll go to weights again. I'll go to mode shapes, eccentricities. Now I will delete all these values. Now we'll be considering x2 direction force. So for x2 direction, if I click on OK and eccentricity again. Here for x2 direction, the eccentricity will be assigned along x1 direction, right? So it will be in the dx1. Now up to the floor level 2, it is 1.5 meter. We have already calculated. You can see plus minus 1.5 meter. And after that, it will be 1 meter. So we will first write the positive value 1.5 meter and 1.5 meter. And for rest of the floors, it will be 1 meter. Okay. So we have considered all the positive values now for x2 direction. Click on OK. OK and solve it. Now I'll go to parameters. I will change this to x2. OK. All 30 modes. The These parameters will be same. Now I will change the time period. For x2 direction, the time period will be 0 0.57 seconds. And click on OK. I will update the result all 30 modes and click on OK. I will go back to weights again and again mode shapes eccentricities. I'll make these values as negative. I'll click on OK and solve it again. The similar process I am repeating again. So I will go to parameters x2 all 30 modes here the time period is same all these parameters are same click on ok and update results now it is updating with negative eccentricity value all 30 modes and click on ok ok so we have done providing the design eccentricity to the structure now if you go to loads and if you go click on existing load cases you can see these are the existing load cases with positive and negative eccentricity in both the directions. So now you can you can check the results if you go to results and if you click on here as displacements. I will click on OK. And here you can change this. The display shapes will be different. Here you can see. So this is how we can assign design eccentricity to the structure as per the code IS1893 or any other code, uh, any other local code that you are using in Strap software. So this is it for today. In our next lesson, we will see more such advanced commands in Strap software. Thank you.